Yeah, that's what I was trying to say about being an artist. You need you need to do something creatively or it's just mind numbing. Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of Fix Me Fix You. I'm your host, Magic Man Mo. Full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. Information about that as well as a link to where you can find this game are in the description down below. Uh, we are currently in the middle of our own little psychology psychiatrist psychology we're we're having a therapy session with eric and uh we're austin and austin's having a bit of a therapy session uh, about his the way he looks and, and feels about women basically austin's got some kind of problem and i, I we're, we're trying to get to the bottom of it also the temptation of going out and having sex out trumps your need to stay in and study many nights correct i'm sure that there have been many nights that you didn't study for an exam the next day, or may have even missed it during to you being lazy getting laid that night. Cause Eric thinks Austin's a sex addict. Admittedly, you got me there. I think Austin's just lazy when it comes to schoolwork. Looks like we've made quite the discovery today, haven't we, Austin? You're not just addicted to weed. Like I'm saying, I think Austin's addicted to excess. Just excessive things. Clearly not. Well, that is all the time we have for your session today. Are you serious? We're just beginning to get somewhere. Yes, and I'd like you to meditate on what has been uncovered today. Besides, I hear Jacqueline rustling around. Go see her how she's doing. I was meditating. I, which, I shouldn't do I shouldn't do that anymore because it looks like the frickin' Trump thing and I don't want to be... I shouldn't have even brought it up. I've become suddenly very aware that I used to do that a lot, and now it's a Trump thing, and now it's like a race thing, and oh, what does this world come to? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up on this Let's Play. I'm just, that was something I noticed the other day, is I have a tendency to talk like that, like, the, like, <laughs> like a stereotypical, like, Italian, <laughs> right? And and I realized that that's, it's a very weird thing to do, and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, and I've been trying to stop, trying to do like an open hand. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Let's see what Jacqueline's up to. Hey, Jackie! Hi, Austin. Any idea where everyone else is? I killed them all. <laughs> I was talking to Dr. Lingstad just now. I call him Eric. We're on a first name basis. We're chums. Natalie spent the night in the city. Oh. How did you sleep? Did you find your room okay? I don't sleep. Sleeping is for the weak. You're like a baby, thanks. This bed you have here is the most comfortable I've ever slept in. It's like it's made out of, like, dead bodies. I'm glad. How about you? You're up pretty late. I'm guessing you were up on Facebook the whole night. Aha, uh -huh, very funny. No, I was writing. That's good. I, it, maybe it's good that we let her go to her room because she decided to do some writing. Writing new songs? I don't really write my own stuff anymore. Heck, even on the first album, they heavily rewrote and edited a lot of the songs I wrote. Maybe you should write your own stuff. Maybe you're feeling creatively squeezed and that's a bit of the problem. Oh really? I thought I heard on one of the shows on VH1 that you wrote all of your own stuff. The marketing team likes to give off this whole image that I'm this grassroots singer-songwriter, but in reality, the majority of my songs are written and produced by a boutique songwriting and production team in Stockholm. It's interesting, so maybe that's part of her problem, right? You know, like she feels like she's living some kind of lie. What? I thought you were a country star. Aren't these songs written here in America? Nah. Apparently the Swedes do country music better than we Americans do now. I, I don't... I don't know about that. I just think that... That sounds un-American. I think so right there. Who would have guessed? Right now the industry is moving heavily towards very produced music. And the Scandinavians really are the best in that field. But like, really well produced country music? I mean, this could be true. I have... I have no idea. But that... That does sound bizarre. Are you okay with this decision? Initially, it frustrated me a lot when my management team told me that the songs weren't up to scratch. But it was really a no-choice situation for me, as I either worked with their team of producers or they'd cancel my contract. Interesting. I'm gonna do this one, because I feel like that's a huge part of the problem. You know, she's an artist. She writes, because she writes her own stuff, she plays an instrument, and she sings, but now, now that she's famous, and whatever, well, you know, whatever that means, 
people are doing like everything for her. How do you let your creativity out when you're doing none of it yourself? You're just the front person, you know? You're just the face. I don't think she wants to be the face. She wants to be the artist. You should do your I'm own music. that's not how it works. Only one major label made me an offer, and they insisted I work with their producers. It was either that or they'd cancel my contract. Screw up. Go indie. Especially today. I mean, going indie today is easier than it's ever been before, and if somebody likes you, all the better. Makes sense. Nah, I say, I say screw them. I say you strike out on your own. So what do you want to do today? There's a nice burger joint by the beach in Santa Barbara. I'm really feeling like some beef. Want to go? Yeah, let's go get some beef. Sounds exciting. Let's do it. Like, I just... Uh, the world. The world. This place is cool. What an awesome view. The sky looks like an ocean. Yeah, Santa Barbara has some really cool places and fantastic views, too. That's why I bought a house around here. Yeah? Makes sense. Oh man, those burgers smell awesome. We should order suit. You have to order and pay first at the counter here. I think they've had too many cases of people eating then running to the beach without paying. Hmm. I mean, I haven't been to Santa Barbara before, but that just makes sense. You go up, you order, you pay, and then you take your food wherever you want to go. I can see the temptation. <laughs> so what do you recommend? The classic bacon cheeseburger is pretty awesome. I also like the chicken teriyaki burger a lot. Eric often eats the lentil vegan burger. He says it's good. What would you like? I want the teriyaki, teriyaki burger. That sounds amazing. I want the chicken teriyaki yes, burger. I'll go grab that for us. If you could slap a pineapple right on that. Mm. Man, things are going really well with Jackie. It really feels like the good old days. We came in early, so the cook said it wouldn't take too long. 15 minutes or so. Awesome. Unless you got there first, my diner would never have anything out in less than 20 minutes. We were so understaffed, it was insane. That sounds horrible. Yeah, it was a pretty sucky job. So how did you find out about this place? There's a sister restaurant to this fantastic burger joint I went to in Honolulu called the Aloha Burger Joint. <laughs> Apparently, it's the brainchild of this British michelin starred chef that moved out to Hawaii after his restaurant in Manhattan got closed down. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. They opened this place just this year after the Aloha Burger Joint was named Best Burger Restaurant of 2015. Then why does Manhattan one get, sh get shut down? Was it... Was it... Sh anyway, I have no idea. Very cool. Now my expectations have been raised. You won't be disappointed. I hope not. So if you weren't writing music last night, what were you writing? I was writing a short story. Writing stories? You could write books or something. Oh, you do that now? Yeah. Eric recommended I have a creative outlet for a lot of my emotions right now. And just because of how things have been with me and music recently, I didn't want to do music. So I went with doing some creative writing instead. It's incredibly cathartic. Good. That's good because yeah, that's what I was trying to say about being an artist. You need, you need to do something creatively or it's just mind-numbing. Can I take a look at what you've written sometime? Sure. Actually, I brought my notepad with me. Want to read it now while we're waiting for the burgers? Oh, heck yes. Sounds good to me. P begin short story. Lara saw Todd every day in the hallway at her high school, and he was always at the center of a group of girls who were giggling and chattering away. Lara wanted to declare her love to him so badly, but she knew it would never happen. After all, he was Todd Braxton, the star quarterback of Meadowbrook High School, and she was just Lara Jones. Nobody. She wasn't an athlete. She wasn't a cheerleader. She wasn't on the student council. She wasn't part of the popular crowd. She felt different from the other kids, and she hung around with Crystal, who was also different because she liked to read horror novels and played the French horn in, school or in the school orchestra. I read the whole thing perfectly and then choked on the word school orchestra. Next page. Laura did have one thing she could do, she could draw. She didn't care much for computer graphics, she preferred the old-fashioned method of sketching with a pencil in a big notebook she carried around. Sketching was Laura's way of dealing with her emotions, and for the past year she had dealt with her love for Todd by sketching him obsessively. She never did it while he was looking, of course. She'd be humiliated if he ever caught her doing that. No, she had an excellent visual memory, and she had Todd's face and body memorized. She drew him over and over in various poses and expressions, but she showed the sketches to no one except Crystal. 
She kept her sketchbook in her locker. She'd take it out if she had a few minutes to spare between classes, or if she had to wait for Crystal to get out of her orchestra practice and drive home with her. Sometimes she'd take her sketchbook and sit high up in the stands and watch football practice, drawing Todd in his uniform. Then, one day, the worst thing happened. Just as the team was coming off the field after practice, Lara stood up to leave, and her sketchbook dropped between the rows of seats, and she heard it thud as it landed on the concrete floor below. She ran down the steps with a pounding heart, desperate to get the sketchbook before someone else found it. She ran as hard as she could, but when she got to the place where the, she thought the sketchbook was, she couldn't find it. She looked everywhere, but no luck. Then, a voice behind her said, Is this your book? She turned and saw that it was Todd. He looks hotter than ever in his grass-stained football uniform. I heard something drop when I was walking to the locker room, he said. I found this on the ground. Is it yours? Yes, Lara said, grabbing it from him, uh, grabbing it from him quickly. She could feel her face reddening and her heart was pounding rapidly. Thanks, she said. I'll be going now. Wait. Todd said, putting his hand on her shoulder. I looked at some of it, and you're really talented. <laughs> Thanks, Lara said, blushing even more. Well, I should, I should be going. Would you like to design the new mascot for our team? Todd said. Don't ask me to do it because I'm pretty good at art, but I, I could see you're better. Maybe we could work together and come up with some ideas. Would you be interested? Lara could hardly speak. Finally, she said, Sure, I'd like that. Good, Todd said. How about if we meet tomorrow night at the library in town? We could start working on the project. Is seven o'clock good? Absolutely, Lara said. I'll be there. She drove home with a smile on her face. She still hadn't declared her love for Todd, but things were definitely looking up. The end. End short story. I'm going to end the short story, but that is the time I have for this episode, so I'm going to stop right there. I'm wondering, though, if this story has uh, anything to do with a parallel, maybe, between Jacqueline and Austin. I'm only throwing that out because they did date in high school, and she was, uh, Jacqueline was kind of a nobody. I mean, she was a talented singer and songwriter, but that, that was like hush-hush. She wasn't famous for it or anything yet, right? And did Austin play football? I don't know what he did in high school, and I don't remember if he said anything earlier on in the series. I don't remember if Austin... What, what did Austin... I, I feel like Austin said he played football. Am I making that up? I might be making that up. I can't remember. But like I said, I think I'm going to stop the episode there while I ponder on that. Now end the short story we'll do we'll, do, we'll find out in the next one we'll find out in the next one so if you enjoyed this episode like up vote comment subscribe share with your friends all that good stuff but whatever you guys do i just want to thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next episode of magic man mo bye